We start with some breaking news this morning. We begin on Madison's northwest side where a body was recovered from Lake Mendota this morning. NBC 15's Christy Batista joins us now live from Spring Harbor Park with the latest. Christy. That's right. Officials have confirmed it was a Dane County woman that was found here at the boat launch and officials are still trying to pull a car out. It is still a very active scene here this morning. I did just get some information from a resident who said he saw something floating in the water while it was still dark out at around 630 this morning. He said they do see things floating in the water often, so it didn't seem strange to him. But when they came out about an hour later, that was when they noticed it was a car. His name was outside also and was the one who called police. That was about 7.30 this morning. Now within 30 minutes, Madison Fire Lake rescue team found the woman's body. She was pronounced dead here at the scene. It is clear to officials that the car entered the water from the boat launch, but they are still unsure exactly how it entered. Now it's up to police to try to get in touch with the woman's family and friends to try to piece together where she was in the past 24 hours to figure out what happened. Our patrol officers are canvassing the area to see what people might have seen uh, prior to this vehicle going into the water. We don't have a time frame yet as to what time it entered the water. Uh, we don't have any information to suggest that there's foul play or not foul play. It's very early in the investigation. Now, officials say they don't believe that there were any other people involved this morning, but the sheriff's office dive team is doing an additional search to see if they can gather up any other evidence to help them in this investigation. As always, stick with us throughout the day online at NBC15.com as we continue to talk to officials and learn more about what happened here at Spring Harbor Boat Launch. We're live in Madison. Christy Batista, NBC15 News. Christy, thanks. Also breaking news now from Columbus, Ohio. One suspect is dead after a shooting on the Ohio State University campus. Our NBC affiliate in Columbus says eight people have been taken to the hospital. One is in critical condition. Ohio State University warned students in a series of tweets this morning that there was an active shooter on campus and that they should run, hide, or fight. Campus officials say the scene is secure and lifted the shelter in place warning roughly 30 minutes ago. We will continue to follow this developing story out of Columbus. This is your weather authority forecast. We had abundant rainfall overnight and now it looks like round two is on the way, especially for this afternoon and continuing through this evening. Currently 45 degrees with cloudy skies out at the airport, mainly mid 40s across the region right now. And we are looking at uh, scattered showers and along with that very windy conditions to continue mild temperatures also as the high warms up to 49 degrees this afternoon. Here's a look at what's developing right now and you can see the rain starting to approach from the south once again uh, just ahead of the approaching low pressure system. So our forecast then calls for more rain showers throughout the afternoon and continuing through this evening. But by tomorrow, things should definitely clear out and we'll continue to have above average temperatures. I'll have more details in just a bit. Amy, thanks. Thousands of Cubans began lining up early near Havana's Plaza of the Revolution to pay homage to Fidel Castro, the man who ruled the country for nearly half a century. Castro died on Friday at the age of 90. Memorial services began this morning with 21 gun salutes in the capital and in the eastern city of Santiago, where Castro launched his revolution in 1953. Castro's cremated ashes will be carried across the country and then laid to rest on December 4th. Donald Trump now claiming voter fraud cost him the popular vote. This just hours after hammering Hillary Clinton on Twitter for backing recount efforts in key swing states. But is there any proof of illegal voting? And at this point, does any of it really matter? Here's NBC's Helly Jackson. His election allegations unsubstantiated and unproven. The president-elect undeterred, tweeting he, quote, won the popular vote if you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally, a claim spread by some conspiracy theorist websites without evidence. Donald Trump claiming voter fraud nationally and in three states specifically, Virginia, New Hampshire, and California. The president-elect's transition team has not clarified what exactly he's talking about, but it is clear why he's talking, seemingly irritated by an election recount set in motion by the Green Party presidential candidate, Jill Stein, in Wisconsin, and maybe two more battlegrounds soon. 
Hillary Clinton's campaign now joining in, making clear they didn't start the battle, nor do they expect it to change the results. Clinton's campaign lawyer tweeting overnight, we are getting attacked for participating in a recount that we didn't ask for by the man who won election but thinks there was massive fraud. The president-elect trying to use Clinton's own words against her. In another tweet, citing this moment and from November 9th. Then we must accept this result and then look to the future. It is a total and complete hypocritical joke that the, that the group of people that thought that they were nervous about President-elect Trump not conceding are the people that are conducting recounts in states where we've won by over 68,000 votes. One of the president-elect's top aides in an implicit recount rebuke, referencing a 45-minute conversation between Donald Trump and President Obama this weekend. There is a respect for the process and the peaceful transition of power, which is why right. this recount by Jill Stein and now the Hillary people is just so confounding and disappointing. Kellyanne Conway, one of Trump's key advisors, also making an unusually public push yes. against Mitt Romney a former never-Trump leader, now one of the contenders for Secretary of State, along with Rudy Giuliani. I'm all for party unity, but I'm not sure that we have to pay for that with the Secretary of State position. The chairman of the Wisconsin Elections Commission says a recount of the presidential election will reassure voters that the election was fair and accurate. Mark Thompson comments today came before the commission voted to approve starting the recount Thursday once it receives payment from one or both of the candidates who requested it. Local elections officials were to submit estimates for how much the recount will cost by noon today. Both Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein and independent presidential candidate Rocky De La Fuente on Friday requested this recount. Under federal law, the recount must be done by December 13th. Well, do you love the 90s? This concert is just for you. Frank Productions presents the inaugural edition of I Love the 90s Tour on Friday, April 14th at the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. Reminisce with some of the most iconic names in rap, hip-hop, and R&B. Vanilla Ice, salt and pepper and Splendorella, Color Me Bad, Coolio, and many more. These tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m.